So let's uh, get up to Moody's Investor Service on Wednesday, released a report that's focused on the impact of the 150 basis points policy rate hike of last year by the regional West African Central Bank, the BCIO, on banks in the French-speaking ECOWAS region. The Moody's report says that bank profits will soften as the regional uh, Central Bank normalizes liquidity conditions in order to combat inflation. Now, the rating agency sees the BCIO's tighter monetary policy as a risk on banks' liquidity and profitability. Uh, so, however, there was a partial recovery in FX reserves in the region and oil and gas exports in Senegal and Niger Republic. Also, the expected improvement in global funding conditions is also expected to support Eurobond issuances in French-speaking West Africa. Cote d'Ivoire flows a $2.6 billion Eurobond in January, followed by a $750 million debt offer this week by the Republic of Benin. Now, let's take a look at this chart for some backgrounds to the latest Moody's outlook for the YMO banking institutions. And I'm going to just walk you through very quickly uh, this few uh, charts to show you uh, the background to the latest report by Moody's and its outlook on the pressure that will come on profitability as well as liquidity for banks within the West African French-speaking countries. And I mentioned a few of them earlier. Of course, you know them already. So the foreign currency reserves have nearly halved since 2021. Again, the year, the period under review is the pandemic year of 2020, and we're looking at the last next three years of that. Uh, the green line is the foreign exchange reserves of the central bank of West Africa, which for the French-speaking countries, and that's the, the green line. Then you've got to see the blue line is the, uh, the uh, what you call the special drawing rights. So what has happened is that this has cut down. If you look at the special drawing rights here and the reserves here, and you can see that from 2022, that's been on a decline, very sharp fall down to the middle of last year when the last data was put together by, uh, by uh, uh, Moody's, again, taking that from a couple of uh, sources. Let me show you what's that. So that's as far as the FX is concerned. What else is also moving on the downward side is the reserve coverage uh, and the metrics between March of 2019 to March of last year. Then the green line is the foreign exchange reserves uh, divided by uh, side liabilities that you can see, and that's the line that you can see from around 80% here and taking it all the way down to about 60%. The blue line is the month of import coverage of those reserves by the Central Bank of French-speaking West Africa, the BCIO. So this is how many months of import coverage you have from about 60%. That moved up a little bit around 2020. You can see the wiggling from around May of 2021, taking it all the way down to the middle of around March last year, around this time last year, which is taking it down to around 50%. Uh, percent. So the BCIO itself, reserves, is also declining uh, sharply over uh, the period under review by Moody's. Now, let's, let me take you through uh, the next uh, uh, chart, which, of, of course, focus on the ability of the French-speaking West African Central Bank to fund facilities for the bank, because the ability to stand by and support the banks within the region. Now, monthly refinancing operations volume in uh, CFE franc. If you look at January 2019, that's about $4 trillion. If you look at that moving up, again, when you get into the pandemic period of 2020-21, that figure moved up to support the banking sector. Then, of course, you see that moving very sharply up to around January of last year. But then the figure after this peak started moving down again to where we are towards the end of uh, last year. Take me to the fourth chart, and let me just uh, show you the interest rate, of course, by the central bank. Again, what we talked about earlier, 150 basis points was what the uh, central bank in uh, French-speaking West Africa has done over the period. But again, you need to take note of this 2013 to 2020, the rate was flattish around 2.5%. Of course, that was a fall from 2012 from around 3.25%. Then you've got this flattish for a seven-year period until sometime in 2020, the, uh, the interest rate also dived a little bit. Then you've got a flattish 2021 and 22. Then you've got towards the March of 2022, rates started climbing all over again till September of last year. Then I'm taking you through uh, the uh, final two uh, charts very quickly, just to sum it up. The banks have large volumes of sovereign debt, and this is where it is. They are proportion of their portfolios of the banking assets, so 15%. That's worked up now to this figure, which is giving you about roughly 30, 
33%. That's a slight deceleration between 2022 and 2023. And the final one is the sovereign debt, as, uh, which is also spiraling higher. The size of sovereign debt within the region that are held by commercial banks from around slightly below 5% in 2010. That's moved up to around this figure in 2022, and that's roughly 20%. So banks within the French-speaking West Africa are holding a larger portion of uh, sovereign debt within the region, and that is proving very tricky as far as Moody's latest report is concerned for those banks.